Welcome back to my Python tutorial series over constructing a recursive descent parser for a calculator language. In today's video, I'm going to finish up on the recursive parsing algorithm and give some input. So to begin with, let's find a way of actually how would we input something into our scanner from standard input. So we're going to make a while loop and we're going to make a variable called standard in. We're going to equal to the input function. We're going to say if standard in is equal to q for quit, we're going to break out of the loop. So when you want to break out of the input, you're going to just press q. And then we're going to make our tokens from the scanner of the standard in. I'm going to say if tokens is none, just in case an error occurred, let's say an unrecognized input occurred, we return none, then we're just going to break out of the loop. Else, what we're going to do is we're going to say for toke in tokens, we're going to iterate over the tokens, and we're going to print out their values. We're going to say toke.token. Up here for the token class, we have the token and the value. So the token simply refers to what kind of uh, non-terminal it is, and then the value is the value of the non-terminal. It's not the non-terminal, the terminal. So we're going to say, we're going to print out the token, and we're going to print out the value. So we're going to run this now. That's 3 minus 3 times 5. Unrecognized input. It seems to have mismatched that. It's probably from the... There it is. So unrecognized input there. 3 minus 3. So unrecognized input is probably from the space. So we can actually go back up here and we can say if character is equal to this, continue. And also, in the last video, I noticed that this said array instead of list. So if you change this back to list, it should be working. So now we're going to play this. It's 34 minus 4. As you can see, it skips over the spaces, and it decomposes this equation into three tokens where the token is num for value 34, token is operand for value um, minus sign, and the last token you can see as such. So now I'm going to actually build the recursive descent parsing algorithm. So we have our, our grammar here and our working scanner. Now remember, for each production, it is a function. So we need to first create the start function. So we're going to say def start. We're going to give it the tokens. So instead of printing these out, I'm actually going to call start on the tokens. And the thing is, if I was to bring up this picture here, this is from uh, my textbook. If we have our derivation tree, the problem is we need to pass, we work from the bottom left, and we create our values from here, we pass it up to the previous recursive call, and we pass it to the right. So we say one, we pass it up, we pass it to the right, we pass it up again, we pass it to the right, and then we go in this fashion, working down to left to right, using uh, different kinds of contexts. So, in our start function, we're going to create our iterator over the tokens. And then we're going to first get the first token, dot peak. And we need to see what is start. Start is a number. So we need to say if token, dot token equals num. So is the first token a number or not? And if it's not, then we're going to print error expecting number. 
and this is probably occurs on an empty input. So if it is a number, we need to consume that number using the next statement. So what this does is it consumes it. So now remember correctly, next returns the same as peak, except that it iterates the current index to the next value. So now we're going to get the value from term, because we consumed number, now we need, to, we need to call term. And we need to pass in our previous token here. And we're going to pass in our iterator. So now we're going to make our term function. Our term is an operand number term or an epsilon. So we're going to say my iter and our previous token. So we're going to call this previous. First things first, we need to get the token. And this is going to be an OP, an operand, or an epsilon. So we're going to say if token dot token equals OP, if it's an operand or not, we're going to consume it. If it's not, this is an epsilon transition, and we're just going to return the previous value. So let's say we have the value 5, a single number. So we're going to pass in 5. 5 is just a number, term. And term, since there's not an operand, it's going to return epsilon, which is nothing. So here we're going to pass in 5. 5 is a number, yes, we're going to consume it. We're going to pass in token, which is 5, to term. Term is going to peak. Now peak is going to return none. So if token.token .token is none, since this is none, it's going to return else, which is the previous value. Excuse me, actually, if we return none, this would throw an exception. One thing I forgot is that uh, it is very typical in these parsers to actually append the dollar sign symbol. So we're going to say tokens dot append. We're going to make a new token, dollar sign, dollar sign, and have a value of none. This way, so uh, in parsers, this would denote the end of the input. That way, this does, this error doesn't occur when we return none. It's going to return the dollar sign uh, value. So it returns the dollar sign value. And then it's going to hit epsilon. It's going to return 5. So this is how that would work. And so let's keep on continuing on if we hit an operand value. So we're going to consume it first. And then we're going to get the operand from the token. So we're going to get the value, because we know it's an operand, and then we're going to get the next value. And this should be a num. So we're going to check first if token dot token is num, then, and if it's not, we're going to print error expecting number. And we're going to return none. So here, now we're going to get the value of the operation on our previous value, our operand, and our token. And then we're going to return term of the value. So now we're going to make our operand function. We're going to have our left, our operand, and our right. So the left-hand side of the operand, the operand, and then the right-hand side. So we're going to say if operand is equal to plus, then we're going to say right.value is equal to the float of the left.value. Now remember, we stored the values of the token class as string, so we need to convert these back into floats. And we already checked here previously that these were numbers, so these uh, should actually not raise exceptions. So it's the float 
of the right dot value. And we need to store this inside the right dot value. And this is because we actually need to return a token object from this function. And so instead of creating a new one, which you possibly can, I'm just going to store it inside the right dot value because we're not using this anymore. And also because Python works by pass by value, I think. I hope at least. So now we're going to say else if it's a minus sign, we're going to do the same exact thing, except instead of a plus, it's a minus, and we're going to return the right. So we're going to return this previous right token object inside of value, and then just like here again, term calls term again, so we're going to keep on recursively calling term with this previous value. And this is actually the entire recursive algorithm uh, for this short little grammar. So I can actually give you guys some uh, example input. Uh, start tokens. I'm going to say val is equal to start of tokens. We're going to say if val is not none, we're going to print val. So we're going to say, let's say 3 minus 4 plus 4. This should be 3. It appears we have entered in some kind of infinite loop. So let me see here. Oh, not an infinite loop. We didn't return anything. So we need to say, we need to check actually first off if we reach the end of our loop. I mean, excuse me, the end of our input. Now remember we appended the dollar sign to the end, so we need to check to see if my iter dot peak dot token is not dollar sign dollar sign print error semantic error else return value dot value. So here we have uh, to check to see at the very end did we actually consume all of the previous tokens. If we didn't uh, receive, if we didn't uh, consume all the previous tokens then we reached some kind of error for some reason. Probably because we either exited one of the functions early for some kind of error or not. So we check this here. So 3 minus 4 plus 4 should return. So here we have a semantic error. Token dot token. This should work. Let's try it on 3. So here we have a semantic error. So after debugging I actually found the problem. And so this has to deal with this if statement here. So if we were to debug type in 3 for example, we'd go into restart, we'd consume our token is now 3 is num, we go into term, we get the next token, and our token is the very end, it's the dollar sign. That way it doesn't throw an exception. We step over, we return the previous value, where the previous value is num, 3. And then here, for some reason, this uh, resolves as true instead of false because we can see here that if we were to evaluate this expression evaluates through dollar dollar sign and if you were to say dollar dollar sign say true so it does work all I need to do is do take the opposite In here, we can do 3 minus 4 plus 5. So here we have 3 minus 4, which is negative 1, plus 5 is 4. So this is actually a working implementation and recursive descent parsing algorithm for this example elementary grammar. And in the next video, I'm going to actually introduce multiplication and division. So stay tuned.